being here. Uh, my name is Bob Blumenfield. I'm the chair of the Innovation Technology General Services Committee. Um, not joined by my two colleagues at the moment. They are both uh, involved in another committee at the moment, but they may uh, come in and out. Uh, and if they do, we'll take the uh, take the votes at the appropriate time. I want to get us uh, through the agenda, through some of the basics. So we are Mr. O'Farrell's here, and uh, as I said, they may one or both be here at different times, so we'll make sure that we take votes when we have at least two members, and we'll get started. Thank you, Mr. O'Farrell. Bad. Um, so, I guess I'll start. Are there any, Mr. Villanueva, are there any general public comment cards? We don't have any, sir. Great. Then we will move to, not great, of course, we always love public <laughs> comment, but uh, we'll move to item number one. Um, if you would please read the item. Yes, sir. <laughs> item number one is a verbal report from the general manager of the general services department relative to the top ten department priorities. Mr. Roster, thank you for, for thank being you. here. We've got the, uh, the top ten. Okay. Um, good afternoon. The uh, first item is the vehicle management system. Uh, that uh, item is uh, will be referred to the personnel committee on November 2014, and hopefully will go to um, budget and finance committee in December, and hopefully to full council by December. SMS, uh, both rep all reports have been uh, approved by this committee and also the full council. Um, now we're moving into phase one, which will be a focus of on upgrading the FMS system for implementation of the uh, new procurement system. The uh, automated visitors parking system, September, the vendor began working on the software customization and an additional server was installed and we anticipate that the project will be rolled, rolled out between July and March of 2015. Energy conservation projects funding uh, Just back, back to three on automated sure. uh, parking. What's the savings on this? This is going to save us uh, money, is that right? Really not this particular one we did before in the commercial parking will save us on staffing there. This particular program is to enhance, improve uh, visitors, processing our visitors coming in to visit City Hall or City Hall East and to expedite it and make a, a much more friendly, friendlier process than we have today. So that's the whole purpose to, uh, of the, that particular project. Okay. Uh, the energy conservation project funding, um, as it relates to ETAP, we have completed two audits, um, which is at uh, Van Nuys Police Station and 77th Street Police Station. And the um, um, energy audit um, consultant has uh, recommended that if we implement these processes that we could save close to 1.6 million kilowatts which is equivalent to about $240,000 a year if we implement those changes. Currently we have an um, uh, uh, audit schedule for Browdy Building, the uh, Fire Department Air Support, also the West Valley and the Newton Police Stations are scheduled to be completed in the uh, month of October. Also, we have another four uh, ETAP uh, projects pending, which is the Central Police Station, City Hall, LAPD Recruit Center, and the uh, Police Administration Building. On the uh, Van Nuys Police Station, we're in the process of accepting bids on the particular equipment that we need to have implemented on this project to complete those. Remind me again, I think I asked this last time, but how, how did they choose the... How do we choose the buildings to be audited? We have a system we call WiggleWise where we look at all our facilities, especially our top 250 when it comes to energy intensity use, and we take the, the top 40 that use the most uh, energy where energy use is inefficient and go for the biggest, largest facilities where we can get a, a bigger return on our investment. And at this time, most it looks like most of them are either police stations, uh, fire stations, or either some of our largest munis municipal uh, buildings. Um, energy conservation projects implementation, we've um, and the end of September, we completed the Barnesdale Gallery project, and recently, in the um, <clears throat> the council and the CAO uh, provided us an additional one hundred and sixteen thousand dollars from additional uh, energy conservation uh, projects at the central library. 
I know in our past meeting you had asked, you no know, overall what some of our savings were as it relates to our energy conservation and also concerning our water conservation. So um, from our DWP and our California efficient I mean, uh, energy uh, conservation loans, uh, we've completed 189 uh, projects, and we projected we'll save about 68.2 million uh, KP2Us, and that would be equivalent to about $1.7 million in savings annually on th those projects. At the same time, um, in 2009, we completed 33 projects of the Energy Efficiency and Conservation Block Grant, and we're anticipating about uh, $11.8 .8 million savings in KP2Us, and that should save us about $272,000 a year there. And also in 2011, we completed another 52 projects of the Qualified Energy Conservation Bonds, and dollar-wise, that uh, will save us projecting about $1.2 million. And as it relates to water conservation, which we started back in 2010, we completed 405 projects, anticipating about 52 million gallons of water that we will save annually at a uh, savings of $322,000, and overall savings annually of about $3.5 million. That's to be commended. Thank you. Um, the Wilshire Boulevard uh, repavement project, materials testing division activities for this project is currently on schedule. Uh, reverse auctions, um, we have completed um, reverse auctions for Ford vehicles, special events uh, rentals, and emergency vehicle batteries. At this time, we don't have any calculations with the savings, but coming in our next meeting in November, I should have those uh, saving dollar amounts for you. As it relates to our water conservation, um, as I mentioned last month, we received $355,000 from the DWP, and we have started this project and should have those 57 projects completed by the end of June of 2015. The alternative fuel infrastructure projects, uh, the West Los Angeles Yard CNG, uh, we had a delay due to uh, an issue with installing uh, gas meters. But we hope to have that project completed by 20, excuse me, by November 2014. So that should be completed by next month. The final project, which is the electric vehicle pilot project, both vehicles continue to be loaned out to different departments or agencies. So far, uh, two council offices have tested the vehicle, the fire department, GSD, planning, public works, uh, street lighting, and also public works contract administration. questions on these that's good I mean a lot of these we've talked about right. on these these top ten um, and I, I think most of them are the same did any did what was there what, which one was a new one this time or was it the new ones we have this time you if you look at the um, the energy conservation projects yeah. they have changed because uh, we, we completed 12 for uh, this past physical year, so we have another 10 that we're focused on, so it's 10 new facilities. Um, in the uh, water conservation, that's a new program. Also, if you look at reverse auctions, we have identified another 5 to 10 additional commodities that we're focusing on to save money there. And also, the, uh, the alternative fuel infrastructure is a new program, and also the electric vehicle pilot project is a new program. That's great. Okay. okay. Thank, thank you very much. Thank you. Appreciate it. Okay. So, um, I mean, that was a discussion item. Uh, I'm also like to, to oh, well, Mr. Farrell's here, make sure we uh, approve items 5 through 12 on consent. Those are the uh, the destruction of obsolete records without objection. Without objection. Uh, that's so ordered. And now we'll move on to uh, item number 2. If you would please read, Mr. Farrell. Yes, sir. Item number two is a budget motion and Office of Finance report relative to the instruction for the Office of Finance to report on options to encourage online tax payments. Thank you. We have uh, Mr. Sampson to the table. Hello. Hello. Good afternoon, Ed Cabrera and Deborah Bates Johnson, Office of Finance. Asked 
us to encourage our taxpayers to use our online system more than what they are currently using it. We implemented our e-filing system, which was our first online payment system in 2006. And with the uh, notice that you got, you can see how we've grown over the years. This last renewal season, 71% of our taxpayers filed using our e-filing system. We have about 400,000 taxpayers each year that renew, and of that, about 71% of them are coming in and filing it through e-filing. E-filing has saved the city about $500,000 uh, for the last year at least. The printing costs, we no longer send them a renewal. We send them a postcard. Um, the processing is less because everything is done online. It's uploaded into our system. So we have those savings to the city. And, what else? and the traffic savings from having people drive. Coming through the office. We don't have, thing. we do still have quite a few people coming into the office, but we're finding out that a lot of them are the Hispanic speaking um, communities. And to address that for 2015, we are going to have an e-filing system that is in Spanish. Mm -hmm. So they'll be able to come in and go through our e-filing system um, in the Spanish language so that hopefully it will facilitate bringing in more of our customers. With addition to that, we are going to do, we are doing uh, webinars, which will give them step-by-step -step instructions in English and in Spanish. And it gives them some additional information that they can use to help facilitate doing operating a business in the city of Los Angeles. Um, one other technology that we're looking into offering is a live chat so that they can, you know, when they're filing, they can actually chat with us at that time. I do know that currently some taxpayers will call our customer service line and say, I'm on this screen, can you walk me through? And we do do that through our customer service uh, phone line. Um, we were also to look at if we could offer incentives or other options to encourage individuals to use our online services. And we did speak to city attorney, and they're saying that it is feasible to charge a fee for them not coming in, but we have quite a few of our, our community base that are small businesses, which they owe no tax. So they're paying zero, how are we gonna charge a fee against what they're not, they have no liability to pay to us as it is. Now I do know that quite a few of those small business exemptions, or the small business companies, are like gardeners, babysitters, um, which again entails a lot of our Spanish speaking uh, clients or community. So we're hoping with adding the uh, Spanish version of e-filing that we can get them to come in and e-file also. Um, the other uh, reason for n not assessing the fee is because we're already at 71. We're already at 71 percent of our taxpayers coming in, which, as Carl has noted in his letter to you guys, it's higher than what the IRS is getting. The IRS is only getting 66 percent of their taxpayers to come in and do an e-filing. So we're actually doing better than what they're doing. I would expect nothing less. We should, <laughs> if we were doing the same as the IRS, we'd be in bad shape. We're, no, we, we're, we're, we're step above. We're, do, we're doing better. And, and again, like I said, hopefully with adding in the Spanish version, uh, it will bring in more of our taxpayers to use the online services. Also with our online services, they can file all of their taxes. Uh, parking occupancy, uh, TOT, transient occupancy, the communication user tax, uh, all of the permits can be filed online. So we have quite a bit of a big base of online applications that are already out there. 
So, uh, as you can see from the report and from Deborah's uh, uh, oral report to you, we currently uh, have identified uh, uh, several options in terms of the technology area that we believe will be beneficial in not only uh, maintaining but growing the participation rate. And uh, the key is to identify uh, certain segments of the um, business community that currently are underserved and underrepresented in, in, uh, with, with regards to e-filing. We also, uh, in addition to looking at the live chat, which we believe uh, will be beneficial to serving uh, businesses, we're looking at other website enhancements. So as we go forward, we're working uh, together with our ITA uh, uh, counterparts, and we're looking internally in terms of what the best practices are. But we believe um, the uh, technology improvements would be more uh, feasible and would be more beneficial to the business community than assessing a fee for non-participation, um, as well as uh, providing an incentive, given the fact that we do have an extremely large uh, uh, group of businesses that are participating. The other thing that I would add is, in addition to the um, the uh, readily identifiable costs, such as postage and, and, and printing, that we've saved, um, by shifting to the online uh, uh, payment and renewal uh, services, we've also been able to absorb uh, cutbacks, just like other city departments that have been impacted over the last several years uh, because of uh, budget cuts. Uh, finance has absorbed uh, uh, multiple uh, position cuts and that we've been able to manage that by reinventing ourselves in terms of services that we offer online. That's great. That's good efficiency. You're doing it in Spanish now, or moving to Spanish. Does it have you looked at some of the other big languages that are spoken, whether Chinese, Armenian? We've talked about maybe Korea coming next, but we wanted to take on Spanish first because with the the uh, research that has been done, Spanish is one of our larger uh, sure. base communities here. So we decided to go there first before we take on another language. But we are, uh, with regards to that, we are looking at uh, a phased in approach. So our first phase is for the 2015 renewal season, which starts January 1st, uh, we're moving towards um, making specific changes to the uh, e-filing module for the Spanish language. But overall, what we also uh, are attempting to uh, implement, uh, again, th with the goal of a January uh, uh, implementation date, um, is adding the uh, Google Translate uh, option to our website so that businesses that come in can uh, translate, uh, use that option to translate our uh, English website into whatever language that it, uh, best suits them. So that's going to be a feature that we're moving towards. We're currently working with uh, our uh, ITA liaisons in identifying what type of uh, uh, fixes are needed, what type of changes or programming may be needed. Um, so overall, we are moving towards identifying key uh, uh, and major uh, languages that our business community uses. Um, but in terms of specific uh, phase in, we're taking that in steps. Sure, just a quick question. In terms of the Spanish language filing capability, uh, well, first of all, I would, I would recommend that we're going to be very eager to see what those numbers are once tax season is over. So you can come back and you can give us like an exact number of how many filings were done in Spanish and what percentage that is. I think it's a great new uh, direction. And how much of all of this, creating the website, managing the website, um, all the outreach piece, is it all being done in-house? Uh, uh, for the most part, yes. Uh, now, one of the, one of, uh, the uh, areas that we're looking at, for, for example, the live chat, we're currently uh, analyzing that and, and doing a feasibility uh, 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 research analysis to determine what's uh, involved. Uh, uh, more likely than not, uh, as we complete that review, we'll be coming forward with a budget, a budget package um, for the uh, upcoming uh, uh, fiscal year. 
um, with a proposal in terms of identifying specific resources, whether they're um, uh, uh, personnel resources, uh, technology resources, any other type of infrastructure resources. So we'll be coming forward with that. But but um, between our systems group and our ITA counterparts, essentially. Uh, most of the work is being done in-house. Now, obviously, if, I, if we identify a service that will require an outside vendor, um, that would more than likely uh, encompass a budget package or proposal. And lastly, uh, traditionally, translation via Internet has been fairly unreliable in terms of its accuracy. I don't know about the Google programs, but would you say they're a little better than they used to be? Um, I, I believe so based on what we've looked at, but, but we have uh, discussed that with our um, uh, city attorney uh, uh, liaisons in terms of uh, we will certainly uh, provide a disclaimer just in terms of to protect the city's interests. Uh, um, clearly, we are aware that you know, different languages may have different interpretations, um, but we believe that the, the benefits uh, that far outweigh potential, you know, issues of, uh, of perhaps, you know, minor areas of miscommunication. One of the other features that we're looking at um, in terms of enhancing our website, and, and this is part of our discussions with the vendor, just for background uh, information purposes, is to um, develop the website where it's a smart website. So in other words, as uh, our users uh, interact with our website, we hope to be able to identify specific topics, uh, specific areas of interest, whether that's in English or in another language. So that way we can fine tune the messages that we're providing to our business community and our taxpayers. And it's our hope that in that process, we'll be able to gather data and information as far as how uh, suitable the information we have, whether in English or in Spanish or in Korean or any other language, how suitable that information is to meet the needs of the business community. We also have um, uh, implemented a survey uh, as another means for businesses to uh, provide uh, valuable information and feedback to us uh, in terms of the various services that we offer. So certainly recognize the concern that you express uh, um, and, and we're aware of that and we're trying to uh, address that. But at the same time, we don't want to use that as a barrier sure. to providing uh, uh, some type of translation uh, uh, option to those users. And I would agree with that approach. And just anecdotally, I would also say that in my district at least, the two languages that have uh, the the biggest challenges, I think, in terms of a percentage would probably, in my district, would probably be Korean and Armenian. Uh, so th those are two languages that are good to be thinking about, you know, as next steps. So thank you. Yes, thank you, sir. Great. So thank you very much. I think without, uh, without objection, we'll note and file this and, and mm -hmm. very much appreciate the update. Okay, thank you. Thank you. So we'll move on to uh, item number three, Mr. Villanueva, if you would yes, read sir. that. We'll bring GS GSD to the table. Yes. Item number three is a General Services Department report and ordinance relative to the proposed sale of five city surplus properties located throughout the city through public auction. We do not have any parts on this item, sir. Okay. Good afternoon. Dave Roberts from General Services. We are proposing to sell five surplus properties that are no longer needed for city use, and we're requesting an ordinance to sell the properties. They're located in CD1, CD4, CD8, 11 and 15. We'll be selling the properties at a minimum bid of 15000 at the lowest side and the highest $750,000. They've already been through the process of notification of the various council offices. There's been no objections to each of the properties. And the auction is scheduled for December the 10th at 3 o'clock in our Public Works Department. Here in Rome, excuse me. Great. When something gets to be surplus through this process, we're Remind me that the process that it goes through to get to this phase. Well, we get a notification from the individual council office first, and then it's then vetted through our internal system, which is other agencies in the city that may need the property, principally Rec and Parks, and also any other agencies outside of the city, such as DOT or um, land and land trust and other entities such as that. Right. So they all get the notice of it. Yes. You don't get any response to it. Because I, mean, I know that there's a whole series. I mean, the, 
Conservancy would get it at the you know, right of first refusal at the original purchase price, depending on what it is, and there's a whole series of uses. But we went through all those uses. Right. They're called the 5520 notification forms. Okay. And they've all been sent out with no interest. Okay. Yes. That's pretty straightforward. Um, it is. I mean, since no other council office is represented here, I think that 3 and 13 should split the income <laughs> on the sale of these properties. And I probably won't get any objection. I'm just, yeah, I have no objection to that. <laughs> None but me. So we'll, we'll, recommendation will be to, uh, notwithstanding the very good idea by my, my uh, colleague, we're just going to adopt the GSE recommendations in the draft ordinance for that objection. No objection. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. We'll move to uh, item number four. Item number four is the General Services Department report relative to a license agreement with Level 3 Communication LLC at Figueroa Plaza. We do not have any uh, public speaker cards. Good afternoon, Melody McCormick, GSD Real Estate Services. The law firm LBBS that rents, uh, that leases eight and a half floors up at Figueroa Plaza uh, would like to contract with Level 3 Communications for fiber optic service, a faster internet service than they have now. Uh, to do so um, and to facilitate that, we also need to provide them with a license agreement so that uh, Level 3 can access a small area on our P2 parking level to basically dig a small trench and provide a connection for the fiber optic service. The majority of the equipment will be housed in the LBBS lease space on their floors. So this particular license agreement will generate $1,200 annually in rent and then there's also $3,000 in utilities so there'll be $4,200 annually coming back to us. There is an opportunity um, to review that every year once we look at the utility bills and if there's been an increase in utility costs for the building, um, LBBS would share in that portion of it by 10% from a cumulative basis. So we are requesting approval to move forward with this uh, license agreement so that uh, LBBS can move forward with their service contract with Level 3. It's important. We're talking about nine square feet, right? Nine square feet down in the uh, P2 uh, structure. Um, in a communications room down there, but it's important that we have a license agreement in place so that uh, the city is protected in case whoever's installing it turns around and bumps one of our racks. Their equipment will be on a separate rack. ITA had uh, requested that that take place, but yeah, that license agreement basically just covers the city in the event of um, any issues that may occur within our space. Great. Any questions? Pretty straightforward. Thank you very okay. much. And uh, without objection, we will approve the GSD request. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, and that moves us to, we've done 5 through 12 on consent, so we have a one item left. Number 13. Number 13. And number 13 is a, uh, a closed session item. Yes, sir. Uh, you want me to read the item first? Yeah, if you read the item, take care of the, the public process, and then we'll, we'll move to a closed session. Yes, sir. Item number 13 is it's a city attorney report relative to the Time Warner Cable's franchise fees and public educational and governmental fee payment deficiency. The committee may recess to closed session in order to confer with legal counsel in relation to anticipated litigation pursuant to government code section 54956.9 sub D sub 4. This item is also referred to the budget and finance committee. Yes, okay. Great. So we could, uh, Sergeant will let me know when the, when, when the room is clear. Mr. Villanueva, I take there's no other items on the desk? No more, sir. There's none. Great. Well, then uh, this meeting is hereby adjourned. <laughs>